many things old about this institution and many things new. One of the old artifacts you see hanging above the entrance to Old Main, there's a banner, Stevens Point, purple and the gold, which in the original days of the institution was hung approximately that position to announce an important all-university event. Seventy-five years ago, it was borrowed by a student <laughs> who forgot to return it. And it was returned yesterday by Leo Pierce's granddaughter, who thought that there might be some use. And so we are announcing an important event by hanging an approximately 80-year-old banner from Old Maine. Old Maine is really an elegant lady. She's not particularly beautiful, not particularly striking. But for those of us who were born here and raised here, she's a, and those who went to school here, she's a symbol. She's a symbol of the spirit and the pride, the industriousness, the vision of those in this community who almost 100 years ago recognized the value of education, the necessity for bringing it to our people, and who fought against almost overwhelming odds in order to locate an institute of higher learning here. She really is a tie to our past. Too many of our ties to the past in this community have come down, some in the name of efficiency, some in the name of planning, some because somebody in power, intentionally or unintentionally, wanted to leave a monument in the form of a new structure behind them. Whatever the reason, the old post office downtown with its massive pillars and steps that I used to sit on as a boy waiting for the city bus. Yes, we had mass transit even in those days. <clears throat> is no longer here. The courthouse with its Victorian elegance whose halls I would wander in awe no longer graces the courthouse square. The public square, the marketplace for the entire community with its red brick tiled surface ripped up and poured over with concrete and parking meters. All these ties to our past, and more, no longer here. But now Old Maine is still here. She's been here a long time. When my father's father came here to Stevens Point, Old Maine was standing. And when my father was born here, Old Maine was standing. When I was born here, Old Maine was standing. And now with this rededication, 
I'm assured that when I depart from here, Old Maine, thank the good Lord, will still be standing. Just answer the question briefly of why uh, we wanted to save Old Maine to begin with. Uh, we wanted to save it because for 75 years it was uh, the university. It was the gym, it was the locker room, it was the theater, it was the band room, it was the art <laughs> department, biology, chemistry, labs, history, English, it was the library. That's what we called it then. You won't recognize that term. It's, uh, it means the same thing as the Learning Resources Center. Now, it's home education department, conservation department. It was everything. You, uh, you could see the students. You could see the teachers. You could hear the choir. You could hear the band. You could smell the lab. You could smell the gym. But, you could also feel and experience the entire educational process, which involved not just books, but people. And incidentally, um, it, it involved memories, and it involved memories to a great number of graduates.
1893 then, the fight and what took place in this city, the fight essentially boiled down after 21 communities to Wausau. Some of the statements in there, in one of the Wausau papers, when this was decided, they decided bribery had to be involved. There was the worst of political shenanigans, and in fact, they said it was terrible. It wasn't safe to put a penitentiary in Stevens Point, let alone a normal school. And if I'd noticed that, I'd have made it Portage County and set a portage for the prison. 1894, it was delayed going up because of a railroad strike that wouldn't bring the material in. If you've ever been up the attic to see that beam at Georgia Pine, and it must be difficult to go down, select out trees like that, and begin to bring that kind of wood in. And by 1899, they get a statewide fame because of a graduate who does it in speech and debate and oratory, Arno Gazelle, who not only wins the state, but then moves on to Iowa to uh, take the uh, regionals, and that man becomes the founder of the Gazelle Institute in Yale with his MD and his PhD, one from Chicago and one from Yale. In fact, his son, Gerhard Gazelle, is the famous uh, federal judge that we see popping up in cases regularly now. 1910, Van Hise in Madison had the opportunity to merge then, if one would look at it that way, and take teacher education in normal schools in, but would not do it and that needed to wait over 60 years. 1915, an Italian educator of world renown who understood what to do with children, wrote here to the president and agreed to come here and those plans were aborted, but that letter is on file in the president's file and that was Maria Montessori who was to teach here but eventually then took Miss Parkhurst from this campus to develop her American institutes. We get up to 1935, I think the most noted thing of that period is that the football team played the Packers in a scrimmage. I want to check who won or lost. And in the process became ineligible for the rest of the season. One great incident of historical value, as Old Main looked out, was in this woman's dormitory when some uh, wayward youth on this campus in 1922 took four steps up toward the women's quarters and was nailed then. Uh, that wayward youth is sitting in that second chair right here, Kenneth Ballet. And he and his friend had to go before the entire assembly to apologize for having done such a terrible, immoral thing as to move four steps up toward the second floor where the women lived. His colleague apologized, and he got up and said, I concur with my colleague, and sat down. You ought to check it out now, Ken. Time has changed. The 1940s, when military training brought people into that building. In the 1950s, with the beginning of the growth, when in 1952, the total population of the state university system was 7,700, less than the student enrollment of this institution alone. In the 1960s, when James Albertson, what I see as a vision, for its involvement on a worldwide scale and having world impact and his tragic loss in Vietnam. All the turmoil, the things that eventually brought me to this campus. And I had been professor at WSU in Old Main on Highway 10, but that was in Michigan, in Detroit, at Wayne State University on Woodward Avenue, US 10, and the building was Old Main, only to find myself transplanted uh, 10 years later here. All of that leading to the 70s when the buildings grew and the elms died. And that is one of the losses of the past, but they are perishable, but the buildings and the idea of learning is not perishable. But in that period, I had an armed guard in this building because of attempts to burn it down, and not by the regents either, Odie. <laughs> At least the Secret Service never identified the source that eventually burned down a similar building on the Whitewater campus. But overall, what we are dedicating, I'm convinced today, is to the teachers and to the students. And all those names, Collins and Reitzel and Roach and Karstens and so many others. The professor who would take his glass eye out and polish it in class. And there are people <laughs> sitting here who remember that well. And the students, the 201 who came here September 17, 1894. We rededicate this building then to the community that said, we want education here. 
to a regent named Park who said, I will go to the last mile, including 101 ballots at midnight to get it here, and to the 12 faculty and the 201 students who began it here. So I guess it stands for the fact that it is the obligation of each generation to preserve for future generations that which represents those things of the past which demonstrate the vision of our forebears. In my humble opinion, Old Main represents that vision. Thank you.